what we're doing here is making a topography scan of this painting. Uh, this is the Jewish Bride by Rembrandt. Uh, it's around 400 years old and it's uh, over one square meter big. But we're scanning it in uh, three dimensions, so not only in the, in the width and height dimension, but also in the depth. So we're making a 3D scan of it with a resolution of 10 micrometers. So that's a very high resolution on a very large painting. Why are you so curious about the results? Uh, well, what we're doing here is making uh, a scan of the surface because a paint, other than a phot photograph, is not two-dimensional, but paint is three-dimensional. So paint really has an actual structure to it. Uh, for instance, Rembrandt, he used paint uh, to give a structure. He didn't necessarily use different, uh, different pigments or different colors, but if you just uh, put, uh, put multiple deposits of paint on top of each other, you can create the illusion uh, of a texture. And that's what he did, and that's what we're capturing here. And why is that so important, the, the knowledge? Well, it, it's important for, uh, for conservation purposes, of course, and study, uh, because uh, we are also seeing a lot of cracks, so we can tell a lot of, uh, about the age of the painting as well, and how it deteriorates over time, because eventually, uh, of course, it will. Um, uh, so we can say something about the health of the painting. We can also say something about, of course, the structure, like how he painted, so getting to know more of Rembrandt himself. Uh, and it's also interesting uh, for making reproductions, because reproductions are usually made in two dimensions, but we can now also make it in three dimensions, because we also know uh, the depth uh, using this method. What kind of equipment are you using? Uh, we're using stereo cameras, just as our eyes. Our eyes use uh, actually two cameras for our eyes, uh, to, to see depth. But uh, seeing depth when the plane uh, is, uh, is ambiguous, uh, is difficult because when you have no features in the plane you cannot uh, estimate the depth. So that's why we also use a projector uh, which projects a structure onto the surface so that it aids both eyes in triangulating the depth. So two cameras and one projector and we move this around the entire surface. And how does your result look like? Uh, our result looks like a very large uh, well, a photograph, a very high resolution photograph, but also not only the red, green and blue uh, photograph, but also uh, a depth map. So uh, we know how, how deep it is or how far it protrudes in the Z dimension uh, in the painting. Did you figure something, something out about this painting? Well, what we saw in this painting uh, particularly is, uh, is its age in the depth, because uh, it exhibits all kinds of cracks and those cracks come forward and they are actually kind of starting to fall off. They won't, but they probably will in the coming uh, next hundred of years. If you, for instance, look at a Van Gogh, which we also scan, we see that uh, its health is a lot better. The, the cracks are a lot less, they're less deep. And uh, that's especially the case with, uh, with the Rembrandt, which is, of course, very old. Um, uh, and what we're also seeing in combination with other methods is that we see how the color deteriorates. So, for instance, the color blue is, is totally gone out of this painting. So what we can do with this method is uh, using it in combination with other methods, for instance to make an ultimate reproduction in the case of uh, other methods tell us that the painting had blue in it and if we reproduce it in three dimensions using this method, we can make the ultimate reproduction in the way that uh, Rembrandt actually meant it once when he painted it.